Hey guys, you're back with Juzzy, and today I've got the arrival of my package for the YSS um, rear shocks for the Honda Rebel 500. As you will probably know, I had replaced my factory shocks with some rear shocks which were quite competitively priced from K-Speed. I had put on some of their um, aftermarket shocks of the Diablo brand and when I put them on to the bike um, I found that it had no lowering in fact it actually increased the height half a centimeter and the ride was a lot firmer as a result I was really disappointed with my purchase of that suspension and I've made it clear on my Instagram channel that I would not recommend that suspension to anyone that's sort of under the weight of about 80 kilograms so I've been riding around on it for who knows about a month now and just found it to be too firm but I finally placed an order for these um, shocks from WeBike Japan they arrived um, after probably about two to three weeks because um, when I purchased them they had to be manufactured so they're brand spanking new and then they had to get shipped out and the shipping takes usually about seven days or so via um, EMS Japan to get to me in Brisbane Australia but I thought I would just do a quick unboxing um, of the um, suspension today and then I'll do uh, a quick video showing the install of it later and um, tell you what my thoughts are so in my um, selection of my process for thinking of purchasing a new set I was only looking at a premium set so I only wanted to look at either the Olin's HO728 which actually comes in two variants or the first or the other uh, option was this YSS um, version. Now YSS is um, uh, not obviously as well known as Olin's however they are very similarly priced but the YSS um, shock is actually um, uh, more specced than the Olin's one. Now I'll talk about that in just a moment but you'll see here that um, the YSS suspension is a company that's based out of Thailand. So when I was looking through the WeBike Japan website, I actually noticed that these um, shocks come in a Japan edition. So you'll see it's got Japan edition. And when you look at websites like K-Speed or anywhere else that's selling YSS shocks, or even I guess YSS Thailand website um, they don't actually have um, uh, a listing for this Japanese one so I did a bit of hunting around I checked out the YSS Japan website and I saw that they have their own original specification for these um, shocks themselves now when you compare these shocks to the Olin's the difference is is that the Olin's are 298 so basically 30 centimeters in height whereas these ones actually have an adjustable height so these ones can actually go down to 28.5 and that of course um, lower uh, height <coughs> from top to bottom um, is going to result in a lower ride height all right guys so now that we have finished with the unboxing of the uh, YSS suspension on the Rebel 500 I now just wanted to resume after I've actually done but the I just install. wanted to talk through some of the things about how easy it was to install this suspension the drop in suspension height as well as um, the softness of the suspension and just the adjustability 
in comparison to stock or, in my case, the Diablo shocks that I had on. So the suspension was really easy to remove, just like the ones I had, uh, the Diablo ones I had stored previously. You simply just need to undo the 5mm bolt here and the 6mm bolt down the bottom there. And in my case, it helps to have my friend um, uh, sitting on the back seat and lifting and raising it. And he's quite significantly stronger than I am. And so, yeah, he, it was much, much easier than doing it with uh, two smaller guys. So it went on really easy. Basically, once you undo those two bolts, you pull the um, shock that you're replacing. Most of you are going to be replacing a factory one. So you pull out the factory shock, you put the new one in, and you simply just tighten the bolts. It's as simple as that. Because it has a um, adjustable ride height on this shock, the suspension, when you open it from the box, actually has the suspension wound all the way in. So it's at its lowest setting. So that's 28.5 centimeters from top to bottom, which is in comparison to the stock shock at around about 30 centimeters. Yeah, it's basically 1.5 centimeters shorter. And when I go to sit on the bike, you can feel that. You definitely feel it straight away. And I just can't believe how soft the suspension was in comparison to the, the Diablos that I had on there. Now, I don't want people to um, misconfuse you know, the situation. I really love Diablo products. They're really good. But in my case, the suspension um, is not intended to be an expensive um, fix uh, for ride height or to give you a good ride. They themselves, when you talk to them, say that their suspension is meant for people who are after aesthetics. So if you're wanting the 28 centimeter shocks that they sell, <clears throat> you can go ahead and install them, but your ride is going to be absolutely horrible and they don't recommend it for street riding at all. If you buy the um, uh, 20, what is it, 29.8 centimeter version, I think that they've got, then it's much for muchness ride height in fact it was actually about half a centimeter higher than factory but yeah it resulted in a seven centimeter gap here from the fender to the tire whereas now i've only got a five centimeter gap um, and the suspension was just to be honest really really firm it was kind of like riding the stock um, suspension on setting three um, of five and from factory it's uh i think on um, setting two so i probably even go as far as to say it's kind of like having it on setting four to five i guess the only way that that would be of use to people is if you were sort of over 80 kilograms so basically if you're worried about having this sort of set up and it bottoming out somehow basically the tire hitting the inner part of the fender you know if you're 80 to like 120 kilograms of weight which is fairly large then in that case then that would be something that you may consider. But for someone at 70 to 75 kilos like me, it was way too firm. So I've put these YSS suspension on and I just wanted to talk about the adjustability that um, they have right out of the box. So as I was saying, the ride height is adjustable by turning the nut that is right there. And you basically, um, have it wound all the way up from factory. If you're wanting to increase the ride height, then you can wind it down so that it goes to, uh, um, uh, I think it's 10 millimeters more. So basically kind of like factory, but the reason why it's different is because you've got a realm of adjustability. So straight away out of the box, you drop um, 1.5 centimeters in ride height, and it gives the bike a much cooler look from factory. Now, with the stock suspension setting straight out of the box, when I sit on the bike, the, it comes down um, a lot lower as well. So when you're riding, it must look absolutely amazing. I can't wait to get some video footage of me riding and yeah, just gonna be so ecstatic with it. But as it sits, it looks a lot neater than what it did before. And you'll see that in my old videos that I just wasn't happy. So in the unboxing I just did a little while ago, it was actually recorded, I don't know, a few days ago to a week ago, 
um, I was opening the box and what I didn't realize is that all of the instructions are actually on the back of the Thai instructions. So when you go to this side here, it's all in English. So I'll pop those on the screen now and then you'll be able to pause and just have a better read for yourself so you can understand how it all works. But just wanting to explain what these tools are and how they work out of the box. So you can see here that in order to adjust the preload of the spring from factory, you have this rod which fits into the um, little holes that are on the collar. And then you've got a grub screw there and that grub screw is tightened by this Allen key. So to show you that in person, this is what the actual collar looks like. You put this rod into one of these holes and then that gives you leverage to turn the collar left or right so, so you get um, less preload, more preload from factory. And then when you've got it um, to, to your liking, you then use the Allen key in that little grub screw there to essentially tighten the collar in position so it doesn't move around. Not that it's really going to move around, but if you want it to be tightened, then that's what that's for. So uh, then the next thing it talks about in here is the rebound adjuster. So basically um, what the shock does after it's um, hit um, something on the road and it's starting to rebound. So you can adjust the ability, as it says, um, there's a 30 click um, adjustability in it and you can simply do it by turning that left and right and so just seeing that in person that's actually this one here and you can see there's a um, hard setting there and I don't know if I can see it on the phone here but there's an S for soft which is obviously, obviously the opposite way and so it's just simply done by turning this valve as you can see you can hear it click so I'm just going to put that, that back to where it was in the box. So I don't know which click setting it is from factory, but I haven't adjusted anything at all. Um, yeah, so I just noticed you've just got some writing there on the coil from factory. So if you don't like that, all you've got to do is just rotate the spring. So it's all nice and black. Cool. We'll just check that on the other side. Yeah, so it's out of the way. And then we're looking at the next thing on here. So after you've fiddled around with the rebound and got it to your liking, you can have, then have a look at the compression adjuster. So this is basically what's going to happen when you hit an obstacle in the road or you, know, you just go over any sort of little bump. And as you can see, you can use a flathead screwdriver on the piggyback system to uh, turn right. So kind of like tightening makes it go harder. Turn left to make it go softer. And uh, uh, as you can see here, it says the shock absorber has a screw. And um, yeah, you just want to basically be careful because if you stuff that screw, then you don't really have a means for adjustability. So it's essentially saying, yeah, take your time and adjust it correctly. And when you adjust your suspension, you should never just go um, super one way or the other. You need to go a little bit at a time so that you don't stuff it up. So it's saying here that there are 30 clicks for the compression as well. So what we'll do is just have a look at that now. So here is the um, piggyback uh, from factory. It's, I guess, much like what the Rebel 1100 looks like, but it's just not adjustable, I guess, like this. And there is the um, flathead adjuster sitting there. So again, you can turn it right or turn it left to stiffen or soften the um, compression settings when you hit a bump. So what's going to happen when the suspension goes up is your compression. And what's going to happen when it comes down is your rebound adjusted via here. Um, I'm not really sure if you can actually change out the springs from factory, but there's not, I guess, um, any real need to on what's really a cruiser bike. And for me, which is a, um, uh, a bike I just use to pretty much get to and from work, but you do at least have the ability to adjust the preload. So that's, uh, here via this collar, as I was just talking about before. And as I was talking about at the beginning of the video, <clears throat> you've got the, um, uh, threaded eyelet rod there. So that's at the bottom of the suspension using a 21 and 24 mil wrench. You can adjust the height um, by more than one centimeter. And uh, 
Yeah, so as I was saying, it just says there, when you get to that islet part, you need to be careful because that's the maximum that they're talking about. There it is there, all the way wound in from factory. So yeah, when I sit on this suspension, it's really nice and soft, and I'll be spending the next couple of weeks just making some fine tune adjustments as I ride from there. All right guys, so now that I've adjusted the suspension, I'm just gonna take a minute here to show you how you need to actually adjust your chain. Now when you have a look at the swing arm of your bike, you'll see here that it says that the chain should have 30 mil of play in it. So basically what you need to do is get a tape measure Stand it up off the ground, put the chain up to the highest position, and then have it go down to the lowest and measure how much that distance actually is. Now on this chain, now that I've adjusted the suspension height, that has of course made meant that the chain is no longer tight. So I've measured that and my distance from top to bottom on the chain was actually 40 millimeters, so four centimeters. So that now means that I need to tighten the chain so that I have only about 30 millimeters of slack in terms of the chain going up and down. So the way you need to go about doing that is you get a 24 mil socket and you loosen this nut here so that it's freely able to move. And then what you need to do, so that's the nut for the um, axle bolt. And then you need to actually uh, uh, use a 17 mil spanner to undo um, these chain adjusters. So you basically undo the 17 mil nut that is there, and then you'll see that in the middle of that nut, there's actually a five millimeter hex. Now, when you tighten this hex, you actually need to do the same thing on the left side. So every incremental change you make to the chain should be even on both sides. Now, interestingly, when I picked up my bike from Honda, as you can see here, just on the right-hand side of where the um, axle bolt is, this has actually got three, three large slots. And on the right side, it's just a bit, a bit over three slots. So um, a tiny bit of movement there. You can see there that this bracket has just a little bit of movement there. So just try and centralize that and just sort of keep that consistent. But basically, if you make a half turn of tightening on this side, then you wanna do the same thing on the left side as well. So what you'll see that as you tighten it, as if you're tightening or closing a tap, as you do that, what that will do is that will um, bring the wheel a little bit back, which means that the chain is going to become tighter and so you won't have as much play. So I'm just gonna give this uh, um, a full half turn, a full half turn, and then just keep measuring the chain until I've got it back to that 30 millimeters worth of slack. All right guys, so here's just my five millimeter Allen key, just on uh, my nice little set here that I love using. So as you can see, all I'm doing here is just giving it one, full half turn, so I've gone from top to bottom. So I'm gonna come over to this side. I've undone the um, 17 mil um, nut on both sides, just so that it's only sort of finger tied, so it can be freely moved. And I've, of course I've got a side mount license plate here, so it's a tiny bit harder, but basically I'm just going to, again, do the same thing and just get it, so I've just done a full half turn and so as I was saying the next step then I need two hands for this is that I'll measure the distance on the chain and if it's not enough then I'll go back and I'll do another half turn until I get it to this 30 mil spec all right so now I've got the chain at a 30 mil spec and so this is sort of what a, a chain looks like when it's at 30 mil and um, I found that to adjust it from 40 from four centimeters down to three centimeters, I had to do three quarters of a turn on the on the five mil chain adjuster um, at the back here. So now that you actually have that to the position that you want, you actually need to put the five mil Allen key in like this, and then use your 17 mil, and you actually tighten that nut whilst keeping the five mil straight. 
Okay, guys, so the last step is to use your 24 mil nut to tighten this one here. And what I've found is, is that once I've tightened that in nice and tight, it's moved from three main adjusters to two and a half. And if you have a look there, you'll see that it's at two and a half as well. So that now means that the chain um, is uh, equally adjusted, the same amount of turns on both sides. You've tightened the um, chain adjuster nut whilst keeping the five mil straight and then you've tightened the axle nut so that everything is nice and secure. So you're now good to complete your suspension install and your chain adjustment. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. This has been a review of the YSS, as you can see, suspension for the Honda Rebel. This is for the 500. Um, if you've got any questions about compatibility and how it uh, works out with um, the 250, 300 or 1100, then I direct you to make those questions to YSS because I've got no idea about that bike. But I can tell you that I'm super happy with the result. Thanks very much guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel, Juzzy Evo X or Tweaked Rebel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.